Good day. I hope you're doing well. In today's video, I will be showing you how I use the color calibration in Darktable. This is the photo that I would like to process. And this is just the way it looks when you open the photo in Darktable. So let's just reset the history. And you'll see that the only thing I did was change the orientation. And you will probably notice that the, the color looks a little bit strange. It's, it's a little bit too orangey. And so something is wrong with the white balance and probably something is wrong with the colors as well. So we'll deal with those two problems in a single calibration step, which will involve using this color calibration uh, reference target. So this is the data color spider checker photo. Uh, let me reset the history so it's completely um, neutralized. It looks exactly the same as this photo, except that here I did not change the orientation yet. So now it looks exactly the same, except that now, of course, we have the color checker on top of it. So how do you um, color calibrate in Darktable? It's actually a quite easy step. You need to use the color calibration module. And then there is this uh, thing, this tab that you can open, which says calibrate with a color checker. That's basically it. And now all you have to do is align the overlay with the actual color patches. And you will see that this starts with some kind of a green color, and that's actually this patch right here. So in fact, I should not have changed the orientation. So I'm going to flip it back to what it was, and now it should be better aligned. So this is the green uh, dot that will have to correspond to this green patch. Now in Darktable, you can choose between a couple of reference cards. So you can use the x right Color Checker 24 Pre-2014 or Post-2014. And then from Data Color, you can use the Spider Checker 24 Pre-2018 or Post-2018 or the 48 patches Pre-2018 and post 2018. I'm going to use 24 patches of the 48 patches that I have here on the on the uh, reference card or the reference target. And the reason has to do with alignment of the patches with the overlay in the software. If I choose the 48 version, it doesn't align very well because this is the spider checker photo. And I think the developers have used the dimensions of the spider checker 48, which is a little bit different in dimensions. Well, especially the distance between the two parts of the reference target is different. So anyway, I've got the colors lined up and all that I have to do now is choose for us something to optimize for. In this case, usually I use neutral colors and then I click on compute or recompute the profile. I get a result, which in this case, the output delta E is 1.91, which is good. It's, it's below 2.3. 2.3 is kind of a cutoff that people use. 2.3 and then double 2.3, that's 4.6. So anything below 2.3 is really good. Anything between 2.3 and 4.6 is reasonable. Anything above 4.6 is actually not very good. Uh, you can see the difference between what the color was supposed to look like and what it actually looks like. Now, in this case, the maximum value is 4.88. So that's only a little bit above 4.6. So in fact, we can probably safely accept this uh, calibration profile or this calibration uh, setting. But if you wanted to, you could try to optimize for something else, maybe saturated colors. And now you see that the red has become better. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't explain that yet. But all the um, boxes with a single line through them have a delta E, so a difference between what it's supposed to look like and what it actually looks like. A delta E of between 2.3 and 4.6. So that's not really super great, but it's reasonable. So we have one such box here. We have one such color here. 
and then one more here. Uh, I typically don't really look at the neutrals, maybe I should, but I typically look at the colors. So we've got one, two, three colors with a delta E between 2.3 and 4.6, and we have one color with, uh, you know, crossed out completely. This is the color or a color that will have a delta E of, um, that is greater than 4.6. And in this case, of course, because there's only one such box, no, no, sorry, there's two boxes. Um, so let's calibrate for neutral colors until we have only one box. Okay, so there, there's only one box now or one color with uh, that is completely crossed out. And the maximum is 4.88. So this corresponds to 4.88. Uh, and the boxes that are just boxes, are the colors that are really good, meaning they have a delta E below 2.3. So let me, I think I did this before, and skin and soil colors for this was really good. Look at that. We only have a few colors that are a little bit out of spec, um, but we don't have any double crossed out boxes. So this is a really good profile. I'm going to accept that profile, and you can see it immediately shifts to. A more neutral color temperature and the colors have changed quite a bit as well so if you flick back and forth between the previous state and then this state you can see especially the blues i think are really changing and you can see that here on the the book cover if i zoom out a little bit look at the sky it goes it's it's really changing quite a bit okay so now that we have this profile there's a couple of ways you can um, use this profile for other images. I'm just going to use the simplest method, which is we go back to light table. We select the photo that we know has a good color calibration. We click on selective copy, select none, click on color calibration, OK. Then select this photo, selective paste, just to verify that we are only transferring the color calibration from one photo to the other say OK, and you saw it change, the thumbnail changed, and there we go. So this is now what it looks like, and previously it looked like this. Now, simply white balancing would have already made a big deal, but this uh, is, is better than just white balancing. And that's it, really. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, um, please leave them down in the comment section and I will surely take a look. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye-bye.